Hello and happy holidays! It's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, and it is uh, officially Christmas Eve here, at least in the United States, where I'm in Central Time Zone. And this is a really, uh, this is still one of my favorite Chris, uh, or one of my favorite space moments in all time, is when Apollo 8 uh, circumnavigated when it was in orbit around the, the moon. They saw Earth rise, and it was Christmas Eve, and a bunch of people were watching back home because this was the first time that humans had left Earth orbit and orbited another celestial body. So this happened in uh, 19, what was it, 1968, December 20. Uh, the mission started on like the 24th or 21st. Let me think. The Earth, well, the cool picture you've all seen, the Earthrise picture, was December 24th, which is today, 1968. So it's the 49th anniversary. So we are going to build a really quick Apollo 8 and Saturn 5, and we're going to recreate this mission. Should be a lot of fun. Let me know, guys, if there's any problems with... Um, let me know if there's any problems with audio. We had a bunch of problems with audio at the last <laughs> SpaceX live stream. I think I got it all fixed. I spent like an hour and a half troubleshooting. Um, yeah, let me know. But let's go ahead and pop on over here to Gribble Space Program. Yes, I haven't done this in so long, so I really hope I'm not. I'm not super, super like. <laughs> I'm gonna be so rusty. That's just all there is to it, really. Um, and of course, with when I'm actually trying to build something here in Kerbal, I'll, I'll have a little bit harder time answering you guys' questions um, because I'm going to be half concentrating so I can do this in a timely manner so I can go and uh, spend time with family this evening. But hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. I hope you're doing something uh, somewhat enjoyable in your life right now. Um, that's just a general statement. Um, it's also a, a friendly statement of friends and People. So we're going to go ahead and put a couple parachutes on this thing because that's always a good idea. Another set of parachutes on this thing because that's an even better idea. Um, yeah, like I said, it has been a long time since I've had time to Kerbal. And what a great day to do it, right? Um, will there be a Kerbal 2? That's a, uh, They just keep evolving Kerbal Space Program 1, so uh, I don't think there'll be like a second version of it really. Um, I don't know. Maybe. We could ask the devs someday, huh? Um, how is everybody doing out there on the internet? Um, yes, we're building a full Saturn V just like they did um, uh, in real life. <laughs> uh, this, what I'm going to do though is I, I, something really makes me mad about Kerbal Space Program, um, at least the stock, and I, I want to play this stock so that you can build something like this on your own, is that the command module is, however, the three person command module, like a, an Apollo, um, is however many meters wide. I guess I don't even know how many meters wide. Uh, oh, mm, let's see, versus something, something. I don't even know. Where does it say? How, it's f two meter. I don't know. But the problem is, there's not. There's you can only go out one notch bigger, and that's your biggest uh, three and a half meters or something like that. And the problem is with the Saturn V, it goes out one more notch beyond that. So I'll show you a trick to to do it. Two point five. There we go. Thank you guys. Um, yeah, it's it's a 2.5 meter uh, diameter here, and Kerbal Space Program stock only goes out a little bit beyond that. So what I'm going to do, though, this is going to be, I'll use this decoupler here as the first part of um, first part of the command module, or the service module. Um, the service module is the part that, well, kept people alive <laughs> during their trip to the moon. Uh, and by people, I mean astronauts. Um, and so we're just going to recreate like a, a kind of version of that. So I'm going to put some monoprop in here. And we're going to put a fuel cell in here. Actually, and one of the things, guys, I'm going to have to try really hard. I want to make this thing as heavy as possible. Because when we build this in Kerbal Space Program, it will have way, way too much Delta V. And we'll end up like almost getting there in two stages. And yeah, it's just going to be ridiculous. Um, so yes, yeah, so let's go ahead and add electricity here. They did fuel cells on the service modules so we're gonna add we'll just do one even though there's like three we can do three why not we'll do three it's christmas what <laughs> we'll do four so it at least looks nice how about that oh look at that now if we really want to be pedantic what we'll have to do is we'll have to put these on an action group like action group one turns on the fuel cells and turns them off we're also oh oh oh, oh stop uh oh, what I need an adult. No. Some some Kerbal, Tim. Alright. 
Let's get that the electricity going back up in there. Redoing stuff. Uh, boom, and then boom, and then toggle. Now you don't have any excuse but to be toggleable, 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 toggleable. Yes, that's what it is. Okay, we got monoprop. We got we got electricity. Remember to fix the cryo stir on the lock tank in the service module. Too soon, John Ellis. Too soon. 50 years, 49 years. Too soon. Um, for those of you that don't know, that's uh, in reference to Apollo 13, which was a, a famous mission that, in my opinion, is probably one of the most successful missions, honestly, because they had a huge scare when uh, a LOX tank went kaboomy um, on their way to the moon. And the fact that they were able to safely save all three astronauts on board, and that that's amazing. It's an incredible story. If you are not familiar with Apollo 13, watch, honestly... Apollo 13, the movie, uh, directed by Ron Howard in, like, 95 or something like that, is still amazing. And it's still probably one of the best representations of that mission. Uh, he just did a great job. Didn't over Hollywood. It did very accurate. It, it's great. So, um, yes, the famous 100% random says, Houston, we have a problem. That's Apollo 13. But this is Apollo 8, so hopefully we don't have any of those issues. Let's see. Um... Yeah, this is, and that's correct, John Ellis. Uh, uh, Commander Jim Lovell was on this Apollo 8 mission, so he went to the moon twice. Uh, never got a walk on it, though. That's very unfortunate, but I think he was just happy to come home <laughs> after Apollo 13. So, now here's what we're going to do. Because normally, um, if we were playing this, if we were building a Saturn V, there would be uh, a lovely and one of my favorite things in the entire world the little lunar excursion module, which I have a thing back there. But for Apollo 8, they didn't have a lunar excursion module. So um, we're not going to have that either. So we're just going to build a space about where it would be and then build a fairing that makes it look something appropriate-ish. Like that. Ah, come on. We just got to get it to go blue for like one half of a second. Ah. Yes, hello? Yes, hello? I would like... Oh, yeah! That's my trick. Uh, everyday astronaut trick of the day. Now you know. Clamshell, we need four sides. That's how it's split into four. It looked really cool. It looked like a flower petal. Hey! Thank you, Matthias! <laughs> thank you. That really means a lot. Uh, and happy holidays to you. And uh, thank you for reminding people to like the video. That means a lot. Thank you. Okay, so... That's going to be kind of our, uh, where the lunar, where, uh, I don't like how, that looks like too much room. Okay, hi, that's wrong. There we go. We're going to do this one more time, though. Build up this fairing. And we're going to go down a notch. Something like, there we go, that looks great. We did it. Actually, in real life, I think it actually just goes in one angle from there. So let's try that. Delete it. Build it. I don't know if this will work very well. We probably need to do a small little one like this. And then... That's not bad. Oh, it faces down when deployed. Thank you, the Kerbal King. I will... I will uh, listen to your advice, unless somebody states otherwise. Um, I've got a picture pulled up over here, too. And I'll double check that it faced down when deployed. It sounds... Uh, the only problem is the hinge should be right at the very bottom of the service module. And I don't like that it's in the middle. I'm actually, even though it's probably pointing the wrong physical way, or unless you mean like rotating it like, th how would I do that? Um, because yeah, we want it like this. Hmm, I don't know if I'm going to be that, that nerdy about it. Sorry, but thank you for the, <laughs> for the advice. All right, um. So let's go ahead and we're going to grab this upper stage now, the S4B upper stage. And again, hopefully we're not giving this thing crazy amounts of Delta V because, um, yeah, I almost am like tempted to empty the tanks and make it heavier and like put a big, maybe we could put a big payload mass simulator in, in that where the lunar excursion module will be. Ooh, we got to get rid of those trusses now. I hate those trusses. Truss structure, gone gown 
And we're gonna go ahead and auto strut this too. We better do some auto strutting in general, that's always a good idea. This is gonna be a big old skinny long thing. We're gonna want it to not fall apart. At least I think it shouldn't. Thank you, Explode. I am very excited about 50k. We went from like 46, like two days ago, to 50k. So, yeah, that felt great. That's a great... I actually, that I have to admit, I, I'm a big goal setter. I'm a big, like, set a goal and try to reach it. And my goal for this year was to reach 50k subs. Started with 200. Um, it was an ambitious goal, but I committed to, like, if I just start really working hard on content, hopefully it pays off. And guess what, guys? I can officially report if you work hard on something and you set a goal to do it, it can work. So that's, I'm proof of that. So, yeah, I'm very, very, very happy, very excited. Um, let's stick a big old ore, large holding tank. We'll fill it up with ore, and we'll just use this as, like, a mass simulator down here. Just to bleed off some Delta V. Cause we just simply don't how did that why did that seem to add wait where's do 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 oh is that counting this as a stage hmm i should make the mirror space station that's a good idea <laughs> next 50 billion subs that's my goal for the end of next year 50 billion we're going to have Make every human on Earth have, like, seven accounts. And then... <laughs> that'll be how we celebrate. <laughs> okay, so here's my trick. Because normally, again, a Saturn V should get wider at this point here. And uh, this is the widest tank that Kerbal Space Program offers stock. So I'm going to do something that I tend to think is a pretty schnazzy idea on how to make it look look better at least we'll do eight segments like this we're also going to push these in just a smidge just from experience from trying to make these things a little bit more realistic looking in the past then we're going to take rocket fuel tanks we're going to go like this we're going to rotate them 90 degrees we're going to put them kind of low like this and then you just go like this oh hello friend you kind of look like one beautiful tank ish i mean it's not perfect but you'll see we can at least we added like another meter of diameter um right right press right mouse button and disable stage on les on the lunar excursion module mm, launch is instruct instruction service I'm forgetting what LES is. Uh, any help would be appreciated. Okay. Now we're going to go like this. Then we're going to just clip these into here a little bit. Like this. Oh, perfect. Look at that. Now we made a wider. It's just as easy as that, folks. Escape tower. Launch escape. Oh. Just disable the staging. But at some point, I do. I will enable staging. What's happening? I'm right mouse clicking. Hello. Hello, hi. Hello, hi. Uh, apparently, I can't disable staging on it. Hmm. Hmm, hmm. Well, use the... Yeah, that's what I was... Well, what I'm planning to do is actually couple this to the decoupler here. I'm going to stage this. Um, enable staging. And then what we'll do is we're actually gonna make it in an action group um, after stage three ignition, I think is when they use launch abort system. Uh, am I going to make the most accurate Apollo 8 recreation ever? Hopefully for a stock Kerbal space program. Hopefully we're darn close guys. It's not gonna be fantastic, but it's gonna be fun and that's all that matters. Uh, this is how we're gonna do this. We're gonna go like this, and we're gonna put eight. I know they didn't have RS-25s on a space shuttle, or I mean on the Saturn V, but we're gonna act like these are those, was it the J-2s on this stage? Probably should have, I probably should have <laughs> caught up on my Saturn V knowledge before I live stream a whole thing about Saturn Vs, but I'm just gonna wing it, because, because. 
Merry Christmas from Hungary. Well, thank you so much. Another another tip from, from Matthias. Thank you. Thank you, and Merry Christmas to you as well. J2 is correct. Yep, on this stage. This is still the uh, the second stage. So we need these to be like this. We're going to lower the gimbals like this on cr like crazy so they don't run into each other. Um, the problem with the mainsail version here, I will be using mainsail on the on the first stage as the F1s because they're huge. Um, the problem here, and it is a problem, um, is they need to be small. We need to be able to fit them. I'm kind of treating these tanks as part of the as the um, sort of as part of an inner stage, if you will. So we're just gonna keep building this thing, huh? And actually, what I should do right now too would be copy this whole thing so that we have the right external skins you'll see what I'm talking about like this get rid of that and now we'll make an inner stage too um, auto strut this because the entire rocket's gonna be held by that teeny tiny decoupler seems safe um, what is the average velocity there's not an average velocity there's an exact velocity otherwise if you go too fast when it's when doing your translunar injection you'll miss the moon and go out into solar orbit um, and if you go too slow, you won't make it to the moon. So the actual speed is something like 12,700 meters per second, um, I think-ish. And I think that's about 27,000 miles an hour. Let me know, guys. I'm totally making up stuff. <laughs> I'm just recalling, and I might be wrong. So let me know. Um, let me know that I'm wrong, I'm sure. And, uh, and, and give me those correct numbers. But it's something it's somewhere in that ballpark. I'm probably just wrong. That's all. That's that's a normal thing. Welcome to my life. Okay, we'll get rid of these guys down here because they're cabbage. Nope. Bye. Bye, Felicia. Uh alright. Needs more boosters. Saturn 5 doesn't need any boosters because it's a big old thing. We haven't added the biggest one yet, and hopefully we're not getting too ambitious here. Well, this seems about proportional so far. We needed to go about one more of these guys, probably, for the overall length of the vehicle. And this should pretty much do the trick. And then we'll do one of these in a set of eight. Mm -hmm. Click. There we go. And maybe one more of these. This might... Or is this going to be too much for the... That might be slightly too much. But how about just to make it look pretty, we're going to do this. You'll see what I'm doing. Actually, we're going to get rid of these for now. 27,000 miles an hour! 12,000... I was darn close, wasn't I? Dang, guys. I, uh... I got a brain in there, I guess. Pfft, who knew? Literally not me. Um, how do you copy stuff in Kerbal? Uh, Kung Fu Fat Bear asks in our Discord channel. Uh, alt. Click on a part while holding alt, and it will make a copy of that part right away. Bing, bang, boom. And it's fantastic. I didn't know that until, like, way too late playing this game. Had I known that early on, pff, my life would be so different. I'd probably be president of the United States at this point if I had known that earlier on. But I didn't, so here I am. Just a, just a jabroni. Just an everyday jabroni. Here's our main sales. These look like F1s to me. So we're getting five of these babies. Hello. And, ooh, we should, in order to make this look even better, here's what we're going to do. I hope you guys appreciate, is the music, how's the music volume and all that stuff? Is everything okay? Are you crying for any reason? Look at that. That's going to look fantastic. Um, hey, Scott Manley. I'm not Scott Manley. I know it's easy to confuse us because we're both insanely handsome. But um, this is called Kerbal Space Program, and it's my favorite, one of my favorite things in the entire world. Welcome to my life. And don't buy it if you need to have some kind of life outside of video games because this will ruin that and all of your plans for really anything, honestly. Here's what we're going to do here, because I want this to look good. I want it to look good. I'm going to rotate this baby so it lines up like that, and then we're just going to copy and paste this. Rotate it 90. Boom. Rotate it 90. 
boom, rotate it 90, boom. I wish you could say like, you know, the problem there is we had, um, we had four, we had eight things together on, on the like core thing and then we needed to put four and I don't know of a good way to really do that. Hey, hugs from Mexico, thank you. <laughs> I'm your life model, thank you, Emiliano. I appreciate it, uh, Feliz Navidad, amigo. Uh, let's see, let's keep going here. The Saturn V obviously has some pretty cool looking uh, fins, stability fins. Um, how much does it cost? I think Kerbal's about 30 bucks and it's worth every single penny period. We're just going to do this, zero these guys out because they weren't active. They were passive fins, I believe. Let me know if I'm wrong. <laughs> Merry Christmas from the land of the sheep. Is that like Ireland or Scotland or something? Or do I know nothing about anything and that's like Missouri? Let's see. So this is, let's see. I think this is pretty complete. Remind me again, it's been a long time since I played Kerbal Space Program. What's it take to get into uh, Kerbal, Kerbin Orbit uh, in this game? Because it's honestly been, it's been a hot minute or two. And I think this actually deploys after, before they actually ignite the third stage engine. Whales! Oh, I was close. <laughs> Wait, who was the one that actually said it? Because I want them to know. Uh, Messiah, I want them to answer. Most people are saying New Zealand. All right, Kerbal is the best thing ever. What's my middle name? Nunya. All right, you aim for 4K. So this is probably plenty to get to the moon and back. And it looks perfect-ish. It looks a little stubby, actually. Is that? Yeah, we can get longer, folks. I think we could go with more stages on this on this first big one, as long as our thrust-to-weight ratio it stays above 1. <laughs> the Saturn V did crawl off the pad, so we could just kind of do something cool like, oh, man, this is going to be a mess to take apart, actually. Because as soon as I do that, I'm going to lose these guys. Oh, great. Look at what you made me do. Look what you made me do. Um, yeah, the... Our, let's see here. I'm trying to think of a good way to just take this thing apart without totally making a giant mess of the situation. And I think this might be my best way. So I'm going to add a, another medium length tank like this. Nope, wrong guy. There we go. There we go. And now we'll go ahead and do this again. And I'm going to push this up just a little bit. Okay, how's that proportion wise? That looks better. I think we're ready to go to the moon. My favorite food. I love I love Asian food. I love sushi. I love pizza. I love Indian food. I love good food. That's my favorite food. Make it good. And I'm happy. This will be a, a curbled flight. A crude flight, just like Apollo 8. We're doing it just like Apollo 8, folks. Nice and easy. All right, so let's lower this down near the ground. And then we're going to put the beautiful launch clamps that Apollo so famously had. But we're probably going to have to double these things up because otherwise... We're getting up there for part count, I think. We are. Where are we at? Oh, 150. That's not bad. So we're also going to light the engines up and then commit to launch. Um, I'm going to still, just in case something goes wrong... I am going to make an abort action group in real life because this thing might, the, we don't know, the, the, the Kraken might end up getting this thing. Kraken, Kraken, I always forget. I'm the worst pronouncinator and most of you probably know that. So here we go. This is our Saturn V. Stock. Looks about, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to announce it now officially. It looks not bad. Uh, my favorite rocket. I love the Saturn V. It's it's a it's an exact tie between the Saturn V. <laughs> no, it's not. I I don't. It changes. It changes all the time. I mean, Falcon Nine is 
clearly one of the absolute coolest things, period. Um, and I'm sure you guys know that I'm utterly 100% obsessed with that thing. But uh, I don't know. There's other there's other things out there. There's other things. Um, you're right, Yazine. Launch clamps might make it slide a little bit left to right, but I'm willing to take that risk. That sounds like a fun risk. And we'll let it burn on the pad for a minute. And then we'll commit to launch. All right. What do you guys think? Think we're ready to go? Um, 100% random. I'm going to do a video about what's better, SpaceX or NASA, as your question infers. And I'll, I'll tell you this now, spoiler alert, they aren't necessarily against each other. Um, I like to say this is not quite true, but this is an example. It'd almost be like saying, what's better, the NFL or the Dallas Cowboys? And for those of you that don't know, that's American football. I might need to say something like, Oh, geez, I don't even know. But it's almost like one's an agency and one's a company. So they aren't quite tier to tier. They aren't necessarily butting heads. NASA hires SpaceX to do missions for them. Um, NASA hires ULA. NASA hires Orbital ATK. They hire uh, private companies and private industry to do stuff for them. So it's not necessarily a versus. It's more of how do what do we think of for the future of that relationship? What's that look like? And that's what my NASA versus SpaceX is, is going to be. Um, all right, I say let's name this baby Apollo 8, and let's get this thing up into space, huh? Apollo 8, because it's Christmas Eve. Guess what? It was FIFA versus Manchester United. Perfect, thank you. Oh, where would I be without you guys? Hello from Germany. Guten Nacht. Oh, that kind of almost looks like a Saturn V. I've actually never built one like this, so we'll see. I've never, I've never, I, I did a BFR earlier where it was like massive and I kept making external tanks like that um, with the Mark II uh, tanks to make it a little bit bigger. But this actually seems to be, let's find out. Let's see. What do you guys think? How did I do? Let's see. Uh, you can't even fit it all in. Uh, this is the Saturn V Apollo set. It looks like still my first and second stages are a little stubby. Not the best thing in the world. Not the most flattering. Not just not the sexiest Saturn V I've ever seen, but it's close. Um, try and make it dawn when I launch. Did it launch at dawn? Then we will do that. This is just rollout, then, folks. This is pad rollout. Oh, I, apparently I have a landed Saturn v, <laughs> Falcon 9 right there. I forgot about. Oh, we got some things on the roof. I haven't loaded up this <laughs> thing parked there. Um, okay, let's go ahead and... We're going to go ahead and take this in tonight. Uh, this is going to be beautiful. Bye-bye, sun. Sun goes down, and we have the beautiful lights looking at the Saturn V. Da -da -da. How many launch clamps on the real Saturn V? There are four really big ones, I believe. Oh, that's Dawn. Oh. Oh, for some reason that blew up the Falcon 9. <laughs> All right. Um, make an explosion. Well, we're going to make a fire out of the, the tail end of the butt end of this rocket, and hopefully it doesn't explode. But knowing Kerbal Space Program, it wouldn't be Kerbal Space Program without a pretty massive explosion. All right. Hey, yeah, Bill and Laddie. You guys are our Frank... Um, I don't remember who else. Frank, Al, and someone. Let's find out. Um, Frank. Uh, Frank Borman, James Lovell. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot about James. He's the coolest. And William Anders. There we go. Okay. We are going to do... Uh, actually, the next song... No. We should pick a song. This one's kind of Christmassy. I don't care. Ready, guys? We're going to do... Uh, we're going to do a three... We're going to do a ten... T minus 10, at T minus 3, we're going to light the engines, and then at T minus 0, we're going to commit. So here we go. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and lift off. Maybe. I forgot to auto strut these babies. And apparently, we don't have an, our thrust to weight ratio is below 1.0. This is a massive problem. Luckily, we left the launch abort system intact because we are going to need it. 
Oh, get out of there. Oh, great. It's going to land right on its own fireball. Oh, no. The Saturn V is leaving. That's great. We need that. Welcome to Kerbal Space Program, folks, where nothing works out. And I should have been deploying parachutes 10 minutes ago. Hey, we didn't kill them. We should have. They should have died. They clearly should have died from that. <laughs> All right. Well, time to go ahead and go back to. Uh, we're going to revert flight to the vehicle assembly building. <laughs> Um, so, here's our problem. I forgot to look at our atmospheric thrust weight ratio, which wasn't high enough. So, there we go. Uh, that needs to be above 1.0 or else we're going to fall. And that's exactly what happened. So, we have a few options here. We can empty out a few tanks like these. Try to work on getting that thrust weight ratio a little higher. Um, there we go. That did it. We are above a 1.0, and we'll we'll maybe we'll commit to launch at or we'll commit to engine light up at t minus five seconds so they can burn a little bit longer. Build a custom launch abort system with more power. Yeah, that launch abort system was terrible. <laughs> there you go. I think this will be fine. Okay, Saturn V Part Two, Apollo Eight. <laughs> Luckily, we didn't kill anybody. Bill and Hayat and Laddie, they're all ready to go again. They're they're all excited. They they know now that, you know, we in Mission Control have the, the best intentions for them. They know that we've looked into everything to make sure all systems are go. We're going to launch at dawn this time. That's the problem. I launched too early. And there goes that Falcon 9 losing its landing legs for no apparent reason. Um, collab with Vintage Space. Yeah. Hey, you don't have to... You can say a time or two i'll catch it i have worked with amy but it's not a public project yet um and i th i think i'd li really like to do i would love to do a live stream with her where we both we take the position because i know her position would be that she would want to cover vintage and talk about how great the apollo era was and i want to talk about how great the current new space era is and we can have a good friendly debate i think that'd be a lot of fun maybe next time i'm out i'm out in california i'll see if we can uh see if we can do that all right, what mod gives you auto struts? Kerbal Space Program has auto struts now. It's, this is all stock. You have to make sure your advanced tweakables are on in settings. And then you can right click and add auto struts. All right, I think we need a launch song. That's probably our problem too. Not a launch song. Not a launch song. Not a very not a launch song. Still not a launch song. This is a launch song. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna like, uh, I don't. I can't do a T minus something because we're just gonna have to guess. Um, engine ignition and three, two, one, go! Lift off. We're actually maybe gonna leave the ground. We also need to auto strut this, <laughs> like I forgot to do last time again. Crawling off the pad in a beautiful display of magnificence. It's the Saturn V, very slowly rising. Did I lock those engines in a funny auto strutty position? I think I did. Cause they seem to be uh Yeah, that looks funny. I don't know why they're splayed out a little bit, but What can you do, Kerbal? What can you do, Kerbal? Okay, we're gonna begin our gravity turn here at about a thousand meters. Which means we start to pitch over just a little bit, because going to space, yeah, you go up. But to stay in space you have to go really fast sideways. As a matter of fact, it's 17,500 miles an hour here on Earth. And that's why vehicles begin. The only reason they really go up at all in the first place is to get out of the atmosphere. If we didn't have an atmosphere like on the moon, and we stood on top of the highest mountain and just shot straight sideways, we'd get into orbit and we'd stay in orbit. But there is an atmosphere on here on Earth, and that slows us down. All right. This is fully stock. Yes, that's correct. On which key is the abort system? Delete. All right, we're going to do a real slight little bit of gravity turn. Nice and slow. Uh, this first stage. So this is why it, it helps if your thrust to weight ratio is well beyond 1.0, because otherwise you waste a lot of time just sitting there very slowly accelerating. So most rockets launch with well beyond like 1.5, 1.7 um, thrust to weight ratio on the pad. Otherwise, it's 
you know, it's very inefficient. So having a th high thrust to weight ratio um, is much better use of your fuel. So even though the stage had something like 2,000 meters per second, we're only going to end up going about two or 300 meters per second out of it because most of the time it was fighting gravity. Most of those, most of that delta V was was wasted basically fighting gravity. So, yep. Launch abort system jettisoned at 42 miles. That's it? Did launch abort jettison with the first stage or the second stage? Because that's surprising to me. I thought it was way later. I thought it was like in space, basically. Um, Lewis says, and then eventually they would crash into the mountain. Um, that's sort of true, but honestly, uh, you could just jump up, or if you were standing and moved out of the way and you were on the moon, there is no atmosphere to slow you down at all. So it would stay in orbit there. I mean, eventually the orbit could degrade due to fluctuations of lunar gravity and things like that, but in a perfect world... Okay, we gotta stay pitched up a little bit, and here comes the second stage ignition. Go! Go before you tip over and do something stupid. We wanna stay about 45 degrees up. So notice now we're, we're really working on not only still increasing our, our height, because we need to get on Kerbal, we need to get above 70,000 meters um, to get into space. So we're still well within the atmosphere right now. Maybe this was an underpowered Saturn V. I didn't think that'd be the case, but it just might be. The launch abort system launched at the second stage. Well, <laughs> a little late for that now. I probably should have known that, and I probably should have put that in. But we'll do that, I guess, with the third stage. Because we're still well within the atmosphere in Kerbal. So this is a Kerbal Saturn V, and not an Earthbound Saturn V. Robert, thank you, sir. Merry Christmas to you as well. Have I watched a failed SpaceX launch? You've only seen successful ones. I have been watching SpaceX launches religiously since 2014. I haven't missed one, so I have watched all of their... There's only been one launch in flight, and that was CRS-7, which was, what, June 30th or something, 2015? Um, I still need to get way up. Man, this is a funny flight profile I chose. <laughs> Getting fiery. Oh, well. Um, and then the Amos 6 mishap happened during a static fire, and it was not publicly broadcast, or it was not public, but... And that was, um, yeah, that we've all found out pretty quickly what happened. But um, I was watching CRS-7. It was fairly early in the morning, if I remember right. And uh, I screamed. I knew instantly that something bad had happened. Um, oh, look at that art. We're going to throttle down a little bit because we're just kind of fighting the atmosphere right now. I believe their parking orbit was only 100 miles, which would be like 160 uh, kilometers. So we'll try to do a similar parking orbit. Boy, I should have been paying better. I should have been flying better. But I'm not. Ah! Our Apple Apps just keeps going up, folks. <laughs> well, we're not gonna... We're gonna be beyond 100 miles of initial uh, altitude but here comes our third stage ignition let's go ahead and launch abort bye bye <laughs> that was fun and I'm gonna throttle down and I'm gonna light up this J2 engine well in real life it's a J2 here it's called a Rhino and we're just gonna get it lit and then in order to circularize this is a little bit off protocol but we're gonna circularize by speeding up and going out to the Apoaps is the highest point of our orbit. We can take a look here. See, it's way out here. So in order to raise our lowest point of our orbit, you speed up at your highest point. Or if you want to raise the highest point, you speed up at the lowest point. Or you just speed up going prograde um, in any direction. The opposite side of your orbit is what will be affected by that. So, so even if we speed up here, we will actually won't change. We'll always still go right back to that position. But the opposite side of the orbit is what will change. And that's... To me, that's one of those things about orbital mechanics that just like blew my mind, but it makes sense, but it just takes a while to really grasp those concepts. But it's really cool. And Kerbal Space Program, Program just really does such a good job of helping to visualize that and learn that. Okay, so we gotta face prograde, which is the direction of travel. Otherwise, we will slow down and wind up right back in the same situation we're in.
All right, so let's go ahead and circularize here. Ignition of the third stage. And we really gotta pay attention here. I'm gonna throttle down already because this is coming up fast. Look at our lowest point there, the periapsis at the top here. We want that to be 270,000-ish or close to it. Like that, we're in 270 by 290. Good enough for this. So now we are in a parking orbit around Kerbal. Ta-da, see, nice pretty circle-ish. And now we gotta find the moon, which I'm... <laughs> oh yeah, that's not the moon, that's why. The moon. Here we go. So in real life, they orbited twice. Um, they orbited the Earth twice before they were given permission to go for translunar injection, go for TLI. That's the call out that all Apollo astronauts wanted to hear. So let's go ahead and orbit once and we'll do it on the next round. So, yeah, this um, K Kerbal Space Program should be part of a school curriculum. I, I would have fallen in love with space um, space flight had I played Kerbal Space Program as a kid. No doubt about it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and find our maneuver node that will take us to the moon. So watch as we if we were to speed up. So this is a planning point. This is how you plan where you're going in space. It's called a maneuver node. So notice I'm trying to go about 90 degrees from the moon. So if, was, if this is at 12 o'clock on a clock, we want to put our maneuver node at about 3 o'clock, which is 90 degrees to it. Something about like that. And then we'll be speeding up. And then we're going to put ourselves into a little figure eight about like this. And again, I believe the lunar orbit, uh, let me see if I'm wrong here. 184 kilometers. Let's aim for about 184 kilometers in our lunar orbit. 70, 126, I wish there was a better way to do this, 150, 180, perfect, 179955, good enough. Okay, all right guys. Um, so now we have a, a maneuver node in, in 21 minutes. So instead of doing that, we're just going to speed up because I don't want to sit here and wait 21 minutes for this baby to get there. So we're going to go ahead and prepare to give our Kerbals and or our astronauts, uh, we're going to give them the go for TLI here in a second, go for translunar injection. So I'm going to flip the craft using RCS. I don't know. I don't think they actually did this in real life. Um, I don't know how they oriented the stage with the third stage attached. Seems unlikely they would have used RCS. But who knows? <laughs> Not me! Um, a parking orbit is an orbit you park a rocket or, or a vessel and later take it to another orbit or even put it out of the sphere of influence, says Mike in our, in our Discord channel. You're correct, Mike. Um, all right, so, oh, howdy from Iraq. Thank you for saying hi. All right, so we have a 29 second burn to, to do our exact maneuver. And what you wanna do uh, is you wanna burn about, you want the burn to last halfway through that maneuver node. So we wanna burn, start burning it 15 seconds out. Um, so when this gets node in T minus 15 seconds, that's when we're gonna go ahead and ignite. So we're gonna, do this. I'm also going to do a quick save, so in case like my computer would crash or something, we can pop right back in here. It shouldn't though. I feel like hopefully this is a relatively smooth stream for you guys. I think I got most of my technical problems out of the way. Everyone always makes fun of me for playing on a Macintosh, and it's I guys. They're all just computers. They all run on basically the same guts. Um, and there's okay. Here we go. Three, two, one. Go for TLI, and boom! Light that candle. Um, but there's definitely some software things you have to work around when most of these, like OBS definitely is probably better on Windows than it would be on Mac, but I think I got it all figured out and I hope it is just much, much better. All right, so now we're actually gonna throttle down so we can really get a nice, precise, and perfect lunar orbit. I just wanna make sure we really have control over this thing. And Three, two, one, and zero, and stage cutoff. We need to push a little bit more. Just a little bit. 
about like that. Let's see how we're doing. 179. I'm going to get rid of our maneuver node here. 269. So actually, we're going to go ahead and we are going to... Oh, 180. Perfect. <laughs> I meant to do that. That was literally just by touching the gas for half a second. Um, that's good to know, Kerbal King, that I'm not alone in, in the Mac world for streaming and kerbaling. We are heading to the moon, folks. We are heading to the moon. We will not be landing on the moon. Unfortunately, Apollo 8 didn't land on the moon, so we're not going to either. Um, I really wish that we could, because I live... I, landing on the moon is one of the most fun and exciting things you can do in Kerbal Space Program. Um, I landed on... When I first started playing Kerbal, I landed on the moon not knowing how to use SAS. I didn't know SAS was a thing, which is this. This thing that automatically stabilizes it. And I didn't know what quick saving was. And I even made it all the way out to... I landed on Duna with those same things, too. And I made it all the way out to the Jewel System, uh, knowing what SAS was, but still not quick save. And I had explored all the moons of, of Duna for about a year before I started watching other people play. And I was like, wait, what are you doing? How are you reloading? And they're like, oh, it's quick saving. I'm like, that's what happens when you live in a bubble for yourself. So, All right. S4B had its own RCS system. Thank you, the Kerbal King. So they probably could have reoriented it using its own um, cold gas thrusters or something similar. Hey, another Tim. Hello, Tim. Oh, sounds like we have two versions of this song, but whatever. This is the song that I put, wrote and put up for that uh, the most recent Falcon Heavy video. It feels like a good space floating song. So let's go ahead and float out to space in this. Here we go. So now you'll see we're going to follow this. And we're going to start heading towards the moon, or in this game, Mun. The sun is still eclipsing, or the earth is still eclipsing the sun, but there it is, sun. Wow. Yep, so here we go. Look at us now. We are heading towards the moon. Yes, what a great time. So, let's speed up a little bit here, folks. I don't want to sit here and fly for three days out to the moon <laughs> like in real life. So we're going to just keep time warping until we get closer. There it is. We're getting closer. And all that happens is you raise your orbit to be high enough to go out to where the moon will be. Now notice it looks like we're totally going to miss it. Like, we're oh, we're getting way too far away. But really, you go up here and at the highest point of your orbit, you're going very, very slowly. So notice our actual speed is decreasing down to 200 meters per second. Um, something like five or 600 miles an hour or something. But the moon is still going its relatively quick speed. So we once we get to the uh, to the the lowest point of our orbit on the moon, we're going to go ahead and do our lunar injection burn, which is always a lot of fun. Uh, Moses, we worked on a video project together. Uh, Amy, he's asking me what what we did. What I did with Amy share a title from Vintage Space that isn't public. It was a video thing that isn't released. I don't know what the status of it is. Uh, it was sometime, I think in April or June, she helped out with, or May or June, she helped out with a project and we collaborated, but it's, yeah, it's not a, it's not public and I don't think it's going to be released, unfortunately. So, but I'll let you know. I hope uh, we were friends. So hopefully we have a chance to work together again. She's a, a very, she's insanely intelligent. She just is, she's, she obviously she's been scripting her own videos since day one. Um, and research is all of it herself too. So obviously, and she's written books. I mean, she's she's brilliant. She's a fantastic person. Um, yeah, was not disappointed. I met her at Yuri's night um, in LA for the first time in person. We had been internet friends for a while though. Um, but this, yeah, she's great. If you don't know who I'm talking about, make sure. I mean, if you're if you aren't subscribed to Amy Shira Title on YouTube and Scott Manley, those are the two. I mean, if you're not watching them, you're you're doing it wrong as a space nerd. <laughs> you need to learn it. Yes, you do, young entrepreneur. They say they're new to Kerbal and they need to learn it. You're right. You're exactly right. Okay, so we're coasting out to our our moon periapsis. In real life, they did this on the far side of the moon, away. They did their, oh, you know what? Also, we should have ejected our, our third stage, even though we have fuel in it. Yeah, so what? Uh, we should have ejected that and been coasting only using only the service module. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, ready? Uh, three, two, one. We're just going to go ahead and 
Maybe. Hello? Pfft. Am I out of electricity? No. So... Oh yeah, I'm still f time warping. Classic. Here we go. 3, 2, 1, and release. Oh yeah, I should have turned off that shroud. That looks ugly. But here we go, we are. And they'd kind of do this and... Psh, psh, little puffs of RCS to pull away nice and clean. Look at that. Just perfect. Uh, yeah, the... Uh, yes, and tomorrow, if you're not subscribed to tomorrow, T-M-R-O, you are very, very much doing the internet wrong as a space nerd. Um, yeah, tomorrow, T-M-R-O. What the best space news weekly live stream space news probably the only good one really probably the only one but they're amazing it's very high quality i'm very good friends with the people that started at the higginbotham's uh it is so great if you aren't watching tmro on youtube hit subscribe right now tomorrow stands for tomorrow tmro tomorrow just short um yeah vintage space is also who i was talking about earlier so um they currently do so tomorrow has a tomorrow space and they're working on a tomorrow science channel as well and tomorrow cities um so they're doing kind of their own shows dedicated to those topics science um space and, and cities so and curious droid you're right i really 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 like curious droid as well um i like i i've got some other good kerbal people that i subscribe to um yeah some good friends there's a lot of great people on the internet, guys. It's, there's lots of options. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to face retrograde now. And this is how you put yourself into orbit. So right now, if we didn't burn, what we do is we'd just go out of... We'd just do a lunar flyby. We'd fly out. Our orbit would is on a lunar escape trajectory. And we'd be back in orbit. We'd end up back in orbit around the Earth. But now what we want to do is we're going to slow down here so that it closes our orbit and we end up in orbit around the moon. So, Matt Lone, yep, absolutely. Uh, the Kerbal King, how does tomorrow have only 16k subs? I have no idea. Uh, it's phenomenal. And it's really, they, they just started doing YouTube live streams only about two years or a year, two years ago. Before that, they were, they used to do this thing called Space, Space Vidcast. And they were doing, they've been doing it for like 10 years. So they had their own huge platform. And then... Uh, the husband and wife both started working at SpaceX, so they kind of evolved it into the show tomorrow. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's they're awesome. So check them out. Show them support. Tell your friends. Seriously. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get here to our lowest point, our periapsis. Perigee if it was on Earth. All right, you guys ready? We're going to do our slow down burn. We better probably ignite that engine, huh? There we go. Service module engine is now firing. We are now in orbit and we need to slow down because we are want our highest point to be 180,000 meters as well. And just like that, we are in lunar orbit, folks. We are Apollo 8. Fraser Kane, that's right. Yeah, we're we're going to definitely talk about how they read from the book of Genesis, I think on their like 7th orbit. They orbited the moon 10 times. And it was on Christmas Eve, so that's why we're doing this here today, guys. Who wants a Tesla Roadster? I want a Tesla Roadster. A hundred percent. Actually, we have a reservation for Model 3, and that's what I want first. And then I'll happily someday save up for a Tesla Roadster. Could SpaceX keep the second stages in space, just drifting or docking them for future use, i.e. putting items together to save lots of money? Uh, McKinley, I have a video about that. Can SpaceX reuse a second stage? Find it, watch it, I talk all about that. Um, bringing stuff back down from from orbit is just a much different beast than bringing down a first stage, which is suborbital. Um, also, uh, what you're talking about, kind of, keeping them in space and docking them together and stuff, that's actually what ULA's plans is with their ACES upper stages, the Advanced Cryogenic Enhanced stage, I think. Um, I don't know what E stands for. But yeah, um, and that's basically their plan is to keep them pressurized and let them dock in space. There we go. There's our Earthrise. Famous Apollo Earthrise. Look at that. Oh, isn't that pretty? Oh, we better face 
Earth, Moon, Kerbin, whatever it is. Look at that. There we go. Let's put that antenna in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Zoom in a little bit. What a beautiful... What a beautiful day. What a beautiful... What a beautiful day. Evolve stage. Thank you. Um, what is velocity to stay in lunar orbit? It is, at least here, 420 meters per second. I don't know what it is on the real moon. Um, it's very different than that, I would assume. Um, did I see... Uh, and hello. Yes, you're right. Um, they were... So SpaceX is working on fairing recovery. We did see that clearly one of the two fairings, the fairings that separate um, on a Falcon 9, clearly had RCS thrusters. Um, we don't know if they recovered it, but that's what those puffs swirling around were. And hopefully they do recover that. Um, they had their ship out there. I hope it comes in here today. I haven't heard. I guess I haven't been online for a bit. So Nico, good evening and Merry Christmas. What have you missed? We just got into lunar orbit and we are recreating the Apollo 8 mission. So welcome. You missed the build and the Saturn V launch and one of the Saturn V mishaps. It's Kerbal. You have to have a mishap. And here we are safely now in lunar orbit with plenty of Delta V to return home. So again, they ended up orbiting um, 10 times, I believe. Um, let me just, yep, 10 orbits. So I think we're gonna go ahead and do our orbits and then we're gonna head back to Kerbal and we're gonna, yeah, nice and easy, right? All right, what a, what a good little song for a, pretty little orbit. I'm saying that about my own music. I'm a jerk. What a great song, Tim. Uh, for those of you that are curious, so you can find my music for free, uh, soundcloud.com slash everyday astronaut. Um, yeah, I write all the music for live streams and you and my videos so that I don't have to worry about licensing. And I just find it a fun, that was a challenge to myself this year. I'm going to write a bunch of music. So all these songs I wrote since this year, uh, I ended up writing 20 songs this year just to have kind of in the background of, music, of videos and stuff. So I lost track. We're going to say this is 10, sure. And we're going to go past where our maneuver node is. And we're going to get ready and go ahead and find our maneuver point. Of course, we can build a, a lunar base on the moon. Um, but that's not for today. Today, we're just doing a simple Apollo 8 recreation. Oh, oh. All right, now we want our periapsis, our lowest point, to intersect and intercept and go through and into and around the atmosphere. That's what's going to slow us down and bring us back in for a re-entry. 35 seems about right. So if we do this maneuver node perfectly, we'll end up coming back in through the atmosphere of, of Kerbin. And yeah, the Kerbal King can use them in your videos. Why not? Go ahead, but make sure you put like a thing on the screen that says music by the song name and by Everyday Astronaut. And a little link in the description, that'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> Good job, myself. Best song ever. <laughs> I nominate you for a Grammy, me. Okay. And we are going to go ahead and prepare for this maneuver node. Right-click periapsis to see altitude without it disappearing. Are you crappy? <gasps> oh, Connor. Merry Christmas, everyone. Or happy holidays or whatever you're doing today. Connor just made my day. The, you learn something new every day, especially thanks to you, you other people out there on the internet. But thank you, Connor. I had no idea you could do that. I've wanted to do that forever. And thank you, Preston. Happy holidays from a proud Patreon patron. Thank you so much, Preston. That really means a lot. Your support and the tip. Thank you. Um, yeah, happy holidays to you as well. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, I think we are ready to do our our D or our lunar. What would you call that? Our lunar escape velocity burn. Our escape burn from the lunarness, lunar unorbit. <laughs> I'm, I'm at lost words. I know. Another good podcast is the Space Rocket History Podcast, and I also like. Yep, I like them. I also really like my friends at the Orbital Mechanics. Great podcast as well. And I feel like I always owe now. I love my SpaceX Now app on my phone for all things SpaceX. They do a fantastic job. 
And I'm, I just recently found out that they have it for iOS and Android, which is great. TEI, Trans Earth Injection. Injection. I will absolutely, yep, that sounds really, really good. We have a really crazy powerful upper stage on this, but just because it looks more accurate. We should have been using the Poodle, but um, we went with this guy, which could rip the vehicle apart if I let it go in full thrust in real life. Three, two, one, and go for throttle up. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna right click on, oh, oh wow, we are coming up on it fast. <laughs> that happened very quickly. And I'm gonna go ahead and just use RCS to do some fine maneuvering. So we're gonna bring this down to 35. I'm just holding down H, which accelerates still forward with RCS. There we go. We're heading back to Earth. <laughs> oh man, that was close from Nate B. I love it. For those of you that don't know what Homan is, that's a Homan transfer. It's a way to how you get from one celestial body to another, basically. A Homan maneuver, and that's funny. Ho, ho, Homan maneuver. <laughs> Holman maneuver. All right, and here we go, floating back towards Earth. Hey, this song, guys, is called Sputnik. You know why? Here's why. Because, hear that little beep in the background? That's Sputnik. I wrote the song around it. Now you know. All right. The Apollo CSM engine was originally designed as an engine that could land a really heavy ship before lunar orbit rendezvous idea was created. Alexander, you're right. Uh, that was Von Braun's original idea, was to have uh, just basically a four-stage rocket. The upper stage would land, up, would land on the moon and come back. It may have had one more stage on top of that, a fifth stage. But yeah, that was what Von Braun wanted to do, but he got talked out of it. Am I playing the music? Yeah, I mean, this is all my, my music that I write, yeah. I obviously didn't play the Soyuz, or wait, not the Soyuz, what did I call it? Sputnik, yeah, Sputnik, that's what it is. All right, so let's go ahead and go like this. You know where I live, it's Christmas, and got a switch and a breath of the wild. <laughs> nice. This is a video game, Eric, yes. This is called Kerbal Space Program. Where did I get the Falcon 9 and Heavy? Link in the description. From my friend Ollie Braun, Ollie Braun on Twitter. So now notice basically we were falling back to Earth, so our speed now is very high. Looks like we're gonna end up landing. Ooh, we might just barely splash down in what I would call the Indian Ocean. Unless we do something about that, which we could do right now by say. Wait, going like this, we can extend our glide just a little bit. Uh, wait, we can go like this. I would like to get it past what I call India, because it kind of looks like it. But I don't think we're going to. I think we're going to run into some trouble here, unless I do this. Wait a minute. Are they saying that's going to be a full orbit and a half? Oh, they might be. Whoops. Looks like we're going this way, folks. I really don't want to do a full orbit. Still doing a full orbit. There we go. Wait. What are you talking about? That's crazy. You're talking crazy talk here, Kerbal. What's with all this? This intersecting and then that's... Okay. Oh, another... I see. Apparently, currently... I just want to land on this first one. I don't want to like go around and 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 around. Okay, there we go. We want to land just in what I would call the Pacific Ocean of Africa. Oh, we got to eject and get into our heat shield here. Otherwise, we're going to be in some real problems. Okay. Wow, I'm just willy nillying this thing. Point that baby straight up retrograde. Let that heat shield do the work. Oh no. Our heat shield's a lot more blunt. We are going to land in the mountains somewhere. <laughs> eh. No big deal. 
Um, yes, that would have been Nate B. That would have been the skipping off the atmosphere. Had we not slowed down a bit, it would have gone through the atmosphere and then gone back around and headed out a ways towards the moon again. We're fine. No big deal. I don't really care. I, it would have been fun to splash down, but can't win them all. We are still on fire. This is the atmosphere slowing us down. You can see our speed decreasing quite a bit. Yeah, in real life, they wouldn't have retro-thrusted retro at all. Um, I just did that to make it so we would not have to go around and around and around and around and around Kerbin to get down. Because we are going to land right there in the plains of Paranithica. Hey, thanks, Rage. Rage is self-proclaimed biggest fan. That's awesome. Thank you. I didn't know I could have a biggest fan, but... Rage has now has now taken has given himself that title. So if you guys want, if anyone else wants that title, you'll have to talk to Rage to try to get it from him. Good luck though. Do I have a a handle lift vector? Handle lift vector? I don't know if I know what you're talking about, Matthew. I will build an N1 someday, absolutely. When I think we'll see New Glenn fly, I feel like Blue Origin does whatever they want, whenever they want, and I'm hoping when they say 2020, they mean 2020. Fingers crossed. We'll have to see. <laughs> uh, we don't need procedural parts. We made a Saturn V without procedural parts and had a bigger 5-ish meter uh, core, first and second stage. Oh, Max G... Max G endured 3.1 Gs. We're doing good. I don't remember when they deployed parachutes, but we should probably consider doing that soon. Oh, hi. I'm gonna see. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're right. The BE4 engine from Blue Origins, which is a methane engine, is going to be huge and insanely powerful. It's gonna be awesome. We are currently using only Kerbal. We built this entirely stock. I want, I like to play entirely stock. So we are just doing stock. What's my name? My name's Tim. Um, <laughs> John Ellis says he's going to make his own spacesuit and therefore become my biggest fan. John, I would love that. <laughs> I'm sure you'll show me in our Discord channel if you do. And I would love that. All right. We have our drogue shoots up. Once they fully deploy, I'm going to go ahead and... Now get our main shoots up. Maybe I'll cut our drogue shoots. I should have made that like a thing. And another. Bye. All right. You'll be the ceiling fan watching me, Kerbal. Hey, there is a ceiling fan in here. Good call. You made a Martian suit, sweet. You call casual fan. It did have three main shoots. You're right, I only went with two. Probably should have put one more in the center. Yep. Will Blue Origin build a monster, build a BFR competitor and call it New Armstrong? Yes. They already have not said that even. He said, if you think New Glenn's big, wait until you see New Armstrong. So, just wait. I think, I think in 10 years, I, I, and this is from a huge SpaceX fan, I think we're going to be just as excited about Blue Origin as SpaceX. They're just very not flashy. They're very slow and methodical. Um, which is weird. I'm surprised they haven't had a little bit more fire under their butt to actually start making orbital rockets and start doing work and making money. Instead, Bezos has put a couple, several billion dollars into this little rocket project of his and has not turned a dime yet. So, um, it is surprising. Well, Apollo 15 only had two shoots. There we go. Where's my spacesuit? Right here. I just don't wear it all the time. That thing sucks. Don't buy a spacesuit. Here we go. Landing during my favorite celebration song. That was a rough landing because we were meant to splash down. Let's hear it, guys. We did it. You thought they'd go with new level before new Armstrong? I don't know. I think he mentioned, he's actually mentioned a new Armstrong. Let's do it, guys. There we go. Bonk. We landed. We could roll around for a little bit if we want to. Maybe. I wouldn't have enough. 
We don't want any electrical charge. Never mind. Oh, use the heat shield as a litho break. Should have done that. Didn't. How much was my suit? Monies. I actually talked about it in some videos and stuff. Oh, anyone selling a SpaceX spacesuit? SpaceX is. Uh, but they currently aren't. I, I'll get a SpaceX suit someday as long as they make it in orange. All right. Well, guys, we did it. We did a successful Apollo 8 style mission. No real problems except for that, you know, Saturn V that blew up on the launch pad. Other than that, it was highly successful. And I think, you know, stay tuned. We'll probably end up doing like a an Apollo, you know, we can do an Apollo 9 and 10. Apollo 9 was the first time they docked and rendezvoused the Apollo command module and the, the lunar excursion module, the lunar lander. So we could do that on the anniversary. We could do... We could do Apollo 10, which was basically a dress rehearsal for Apollo 11. Then we can do Apollo 11. There's a lot of fun things. So, yeah. Uh, you're wondering about the Zuma load. I am too. Um, yeah. How much How much money is the spacesuit? Probably a lot. Um, I've used Streamlabs before, and it is it was so buggy. And <laughs> OBS is too, but it's it's at least a solid stream. Uh, I just had so many problems with, with that. So, um, guys, I think that's going to be it though. I, I got to kind of be ready for, you know, for the holidays and stuff. I don't, I can't stream forever. My throat hurts anyway. I of course got sick cause how, how else it wouldn't be the holidays without being sick. So yeah, thank you so much everybody. Um, as yeah, as Preston mentions, if you want to help support what I do uh, and help us script videos, help us research uh, topics and just have a great discussion, in our uh, yeah, in our Discord channel, you can become a Patreon member. Go to patreoncom slash everydayastronaut. Um, yeah, it, that support means a lot. It's literally that that's been the encouragement to help me continue to do not play Kerbal, but mostly produce those uh, those videos that take weeks <laughs> to make. So, and thank you guys for all the new subs, and thank you guys for hanging out here on Christmas Eve. Um, yeah, it's it's been fun. Thank you, Allie, for the Patreon links. Um, there's also other links in the description if you want hats and shirts or other merchandise. Um, I know it's too late now for the holidays to ask for it, but maybe if you get some cool Christmas cash and you want some fun merch like hats and shirts or prints, everydayastronaut.com slash shop. And, uh, yeah, make sure and subscribe. Tell a friend if they have questions about SpaceX. Show them some of my videos that hopefully will help explain SpaceX and space things. Uh, most of them are about SpaceX right now because there's a lot of questions to be answered about SpaceX and there's a lot of a lot of people aren't focusing on that. A lot of people there's a lot of good videos about, you know, Apollo, Space Shuttle and stuff like that, but there's not a lot of in-depth content about SpaceX. So that's kind of been my niche for now, but I will clearly go beyond that. Um, we have all the time in the world to just keep making awesome videos. So yeah, I, I uh, thank you guys so much again for hanging out. Uh, I hope that you have a fantastic holiday season. Hopefully it's not too stressful. Hopefully you guys have a lot of fun and stay safe. Stay hydrated. Stay warm. Or stay cold if you're really hot. Stay safe and happy. And give someone a hug today. And get them excited about space. And learn a bunch with me. Thank you guys. That's going to do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut. Bringing space down to earth for everyday people. I think we all dreamt about going to space when we were kids. But when the space shuttle program ended in 2011, I discovered a void in my life. That emptiness led to a newfound obsession with space. A few years later, I wound up bidding on a Russian spacesuit as a joke. When the box arrived at my doorstep, my friends asked, what are you going to do with a spacesuit? The answer, what can't I do with a spacesuit? And that's how Everyday Astronaut was born. Since then, the suit hasn't left my side. It's even gone around the world with me. From remote villages in Myanmar, rockets and spaceships. To beautiful fields in Norway. I'm fighting a cow to get a picture right now. Here I am on vacation in the beautiful Norway with my beautiful I even proposed to my wife in the suit at Machu Picchu, Peru.
These days, I've worked with leaders in the space industry to create fun and inspirational content. I've even been invited to different NASA facilities across the country, all for the sake of sharing my excitement with the world. <laughs> hey there, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware, but NASA is doing some incredible... This is, this is church for us space nerds. This is where Gene Kranz was sitting when people first met him. This is with permission. I still don't know how. I love that I'm standing on something that says urine bags. This thing's gonna fly like a cat in the heat. Whatever that means. That dog's gonna have a sore throat by the end of the day, I'll tell you that. Especially once he tries to explain to his friends that he just saw an astronaut flying majestically through the sky for an hour. This thing has officially become the bane of my existence. Everyday Astronaut's mission is to bring space down to Earth for everyday people. To communicate science through humor and imagination. But most importantly, to spark your curiosity, to want to find your place in the cosmos. Join my adventures as I seek to find out why exploring space is important, inspiring, and quite frankly, really, really neat. Show your support by visiting patreon.com slash everydayastronaut.